Yeah, welcome back to a brand new season of DXB Today and goes without saying that we kick off the new season with a look ahead to what might be over the next couple of months and where better to start than of course the centre of some of the biggest gigs in town, the Coca-Cola Arena. The Governor is alongside us, the General Manager. Call him what you want today, it's fine, he'll take it. Uh, Mark Yankar alongside us, good to have you back on the sofa, all well? Oh well, thanks for having me back. Um, let's talk about, there I am sort of bigging up, you know, let's talk about the future and let's talk about what's coming up and we'll, you're going to give us a little insight into that one. But just want to pick up on something that Farah was saying a little earlier on about the fact that Ramadan this year seemed to be busier, certainly event-wise, than it has done in previous years. Is that your understanding? It has, yes. So for the first time we were granted a license to undertake activities, events, during the holy month of Ramadan. Oh, wow, for the first time. For the first time. So we had some restrictions. Um, so, but, so we did two shows. We did Marsha and the Bear and uh, EuroLeague Under 18's Next Generation Championships. Yeah. So it was our sort of entry point into, into Ramadan. And uh, we closed for two weeks to do some repairs and maintenance. Yeah. And we're ready for the season to continue. Did you have a break then? Four days. Oh, wow. Four <laughs> days. Congratulations. Four days. <laughs> so that was obviously a super busy, successful Ramadan for you. Mm -hmm. What's next? I mean, we'd already mentioned a couple of them and we're all very excited about Boys to Men. Um, but what else have we got coming up? Because you're jam packed again. We are. We are incredibly busy. And, um, you know, when you look at the buyers, so many things going on and, and weather plays a major factor into it. So for us, in terms of the live entertainment scene, this is, I would say, our closest competitive advantage. It's a little um. bit, it's getting a bit too warm to go outside and all these different, undertake all these sort of outdoor activities and so forth. So the focus sort of remains indoors. We all know that sort of come towards the end of June, first week of July, things certainly slow down in the city along with the sort of the academic year mm. and it picks up again towards the end of August. Mm. But for us, prime time is very much sort of mid April right through to about third week of June. That's actually really interesting because you don't think about that, do you? I mean, your competitors yep. is the outdoors. <laughs> is it, it, like, it is. It's everything from obviously the beach to yeah. Alcudra Lakes to sort of walks and family time and so forth. So, you know, you're all competing for time, yeah. number one, in yeah. Dubai. Yeah. Everything's fast paced and competing for the wallet. The well, it's good wallet. to know that someone's excited about the heat coming yeah. in. <laughs> now, what I'm most impressed with you guys is, is that you've got such an international selection of artists coming in and including a number of Arab artists as well. Haifa Wahbi yep. and uh, Elisa. Yep. And Saif Nabil. And who? Yep. Yeah, Saif Saif tell, tell us some of the names there. Yep, that's it. They're the three. <laughs> You're like, oh, you named all three. You were just <laughs> missing two. <laughs> and as well, you had the first Iranian show Correct. as well, didn't yep. you? So that was quite exciting for us. Is obviously, as we are growing our sort of portfolio of genres, we had our first Iranian artist on the 9th of, uh, which was actually the day before, uh, obviously Eid was called, mm. um, and the artist was Ebi. So Amazing. we look forward to many more Iranian artists coming through. Fantastic. And are there any dates for our diaries that we should be kind of like noting down, like the big names that you've got coming to Coca-Cola Arena in the next few weeks? So we intentionally, we have some big names, contracts are signed. Obviously we had Coachella in the States this weekend. So the headlines is very much dominated in around that. So we are hoping over the sort of two, three weeks to slowly be announcing some of the bigger acts. Fantastic. Some of these bigger acts are sort of three to four months away post summer. Uh, there's a couple of big ones still just before summer, but um, it's very exciting coming through. Look oh, what, like Shaggy, Blackstreet, what were you about to say, Tom? Yeah. Were, you, were you offering someone? No, no, I was not. That no, I'm allowing that. You're, you're our artist expert, so you go. <laughs> Boys to Men, Jason Derulo, all these Correct. exciting yep. names. Hans Zimmer. Hans Zimmer, two shows of Hans Zimmer. We just added the second one. I mean, last time they were completely sold out, right? Absolutely. You know, get a hands on a ticket. Tell us a little bit more. Farah mentioned mm -hmm. it earlier about your collaboration you're doing with Roxy Cinemas. Correct. So, um, obviously, part of the, the network of Dubai Holding and um, the guys at the Comedy Festival um, were exploring different venues and, and due to the size of Dubai and mm. what is happening, they were quite, quite limited in on space. And, and so we've done a little bit of work with Dubai Holding in terms of uh, the extreme cinema at, at Roxy's. And we're thinking, well, what an incredible opportunity to maybe look at this space for it to become a live entertainment venue with cinema, its anchor tenant, and then bring in sort of, you know, the spoken word events, TED Talks, other bits and pieces. So our opening is Dubai Comedy Festival. We're really supporting with the guys there. So it's six incredible shows. And if that goes well, which I'm sure it will, we'll be looking at adding a brilliant new live venue into Dubai at Dubai Hills Mall. That's awesome. So you've obviously had some really big names at Coca-Cola Arena, mm -hmm. but there must be some artists, international artists, that you just get asked for time and time yep. again. Who are they? 
Burner Boy. Why have you not bought them? <laughs> and when are they coming? Yeah. Uh, number one is Burner Boy. Right. So um, we would love to get Burner Boy, and hopefully one day we can we can make it happen. Um, we've had other artists, uh, especially in the sort of uh, heavy metal scene, mm -hmm. the Metallicas of the world, and, mm. and so forth. The economics are challenged on that one. Um, but we, we work hard to, to hopefully you, make it happen. With the economics of it, because you see more and more big companies, big brands also coming to you now, wanting to take over the space, etc. Yep. How do you get that? I and mean, we talked a bit earlier about the balance of the different nationalities and things like that. But if you get a big artist like that, are you losing the space for a couple of days with the set in the setup? Do you have to sort of work out? Correct. So obviously our, our, as our focus and our primary core business will always be live events. Yeah. Um, you know, corporate events make up a, a, an important piece of of that with with live and these particular artists um, they have big touring groups they have huge cargo yeah. and logistics yeah. that come through as we know and um, so it very much is dependent on regional activity so if they are performing potentially in Saudi or in India or, or in Turkey or in Cyprus along those lines where we can sort of squeeze in and um, the challenge comes down to the artist fees versus yeah, of the economics yeah. of actually uh, breaking even paying them enough to get yeah. in yeah. now listen Mark <laughs> You've been on are, the we, show. are we doing this again? We're doing it again, okay. Mark comes on the show a lot and we love him for it. We love the Coca-Cola Arena. But I really, you've been asked three times now. We want to know some names. We want some exclusives. We want to know who's coming to Dubai because we need to start buying tickets. So who's coming? Like who's actually coming? There's no such thing as a free cup of coffee. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> like, literally, <laughs> literally, there is no such thing, all right? <laughs> so um, who is coming? We've come prepared. Okay. I've come prepared. Okay. We'll, we will give you a name of a show and we'll give you the date. We can't release the lineup. Okay. But we'll, we'll start with this. Ooh, okay. So the date is the 15th of June. Oh, near my birthday. Near your birthday. That's very kind. And the event is called Legends of Hip Hop. Oh. Okay. And you're not going to give us what, one teeny name? I, I a teeny tiny name. Can't even do that. Is but it going to satisfy all the 90s kids when you say Legend? Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> I'm like, I know I'm going to meet them. Do you know what, though? Okay. I'm happy with that. There we go. Thanks, Mark. Thank you very much. Well, do you know what? On that, that's it. We're done. We're, we're done for that. No, <laughs> genuinely, thank you so much because we love hearing your announcements. We love you coming on because Coco Arena is such an incredible venue. So thanks, Mark. Thank you. Thanks, Mark. <laughs> 15th, of June. 15th of June. All right. Now with art-related careers taking the center stage amongst Gen Z and Gen Alpha, today's spotlight is on an artpreneur blending creativity and self-expression through events, workshops, murals, and much more. This is Fosca Garcia from Fosk Art. Hi, my name is Fosca Garcia, and I am the founder of House of Hearts event, most known as Foscard. So Foscard is a platform wherein we introduce a lot of creative experiences for people in terms of different art workshops, activations, and a lot of mural commissions. So we do have a lot of artists not knowing where to go or what to do, aside from creating art. Uh, Foscard is created in order to provide more options for creatives or artists to have other designs or other options for them to do their art. For example, um, art workshops wherein they could do and teach people how to create a certain type of art, let's say pottery, candle, painting. Aside from that, we connect them to brands for customizations or brand activations wherein they could stretch out their talent and creativity into something else. We were able to create a lot of like workshops, events, and experiences with big brands such as Porsche. We have done events for more than thousands of people. Um, luckily, we're able to be the only non-Emirati participant as well during the Dubai uh, for Dubai culture during the Emirati Women's Day last year. We have tons of other ongoing partnerships as well, which has been running for years. Long term, we really want to be like a big uh, scope of platform wherein we have a lot of database of artists that we can connect to brands. In that way, we can offer more diversity, meaning it's not just painting as art. We want to offer like in the future anything that's related to it, like dancing, performance, theater, anything that expands to the word art. 
and at the same time that would make it easy for artists and brands to know where to go and long term we want to be that platform that shares and produces creative experiences for people. Dubai for me is like my second home. It's like my playground. So I like it very much in a way that just visually and um, emotionally, it gives me much emo uh, more inspiration to create. There's so many nice places to go, nice places to live, venues to work with, activities to do. And as an artist, it just, how do you call that, energizes uh, your mind, especially in creating a lot of different unique stuff. An artpreneur, which is a new one for me, a focus on all things art. Well, I'll focus now on all things current affairs. What's the latest in the news, Katie? That's me. Dubai ranks ninth in the world as the most livable city for expats. The Global Expat Index also ranked the Emirate as the third best city in the whole of Asia and Abu Dhabi emerging as the safest city in the world. I mean, we are all long time expats, so how incredible is that? And I'm actually It's amazing, not but I thought it would be I thought it would be higher on that list. Weirdly, I actually thought Thank it you. would be higher too. Farah, yeah. what are you saying? Yeah, I agree, I agree. I mean there's a lot of cities in the world, so let's take Mark as a win. <laughs> None as good as Dubai. <laughs> None as good as Dubai. Obviously, we all know that, but listen, we don't. Yeah. The judges don't live here. No, that's true, actually. So, what? Tax free salaries? Safety. 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 Safety for me as a mom is number one. The fact that I can just let my kids roam free, I'm not, you know, having to follow them everywhere. They I mean, not all parents just let their kids just roam free, Dina. <laughs> yeah. Just like. I think in, when you live in yeah. the UAE, how about, you know, I know it's like a joke on TikTok or whatever, that all the people that leave their phones and wallets to reserve a table. I do that here. I do that. That's how relaxed it is. Tom, you're looking at me like you don't do that. Uh, no, it's, 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 it's funny you say that because I, it, I was talking about that only last week whilst we were away with the kids and they were doing exactly the same. Oh, but in another country, yeah. yeah. You go around the world, well, you have to remain, you know, yeah. r remind yourselves, whatever. It's the remits, a lot of these surveys, they have weird sort of judging formula and things like that. So like walkability yeah. would be an element of that, which is fine at this time of year, but try to do that in the middle For of sure. July, et cetera, Fair maybe enough. not. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, given how Dubai likes to be top three of any listing, etc. I'm one. surprised. <laughs> top one, yeah, please. But you can guarantee that, especially, we're going to be talking to the DET in just a few moments time, and they will look at these parameters and Dubai uh, economies and tourism and are always looking at ways of like improving mm. um, the, the living standards, the, 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 the offerings, if you like. So it'd be interesting to see what they will be bringing. I think you're there. right about the kind of mobility side of things, getting around the city, be it public transport or uh, transport, public transport or the cycle routes and scooters being available. Everything's amazing. But all year round sunshine, sign me up. <laughs> Thank you very much. Well, that's why so many people want to cut, you know, that's why the population is booming at the moment, etc. And and, uh, and 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 we're still here. <laughs> well, you know what? One of the reasons that this city is so remarkable and amazing and exciting and safe. It has a lot to do with uh, the next guest, the, the next guest that we're going to be chatting with. So next up, we we talk to Dubai Economy and Tourism, aka DET, about exclusive projects and events we need to mark in our diaries. Plus, we've got great music, so we'll see you after this.